So here it finally is in 2021, 16 years since the release of the first game, Psychonauts 2 has been released. The original Psychonauts was a collectathon platformer directed by Tim Schafer. It was originally released for the PC, Xbox, and PS2. Despite its infamously difficult development cycle and poor sales, it spawned a die-hard cult fanbase. This game was known for its dark, crude humor, similar to that of the original Ratchet & Clank or Jack & Daxter games, and creative, imaginative, surreal level design. Personally, I am a big fan of the original games. The humor is genuinely funny in a messed up kind of way. I mean, kids literally attempt suicide for laughs. The level design is incredibly creative. I especially like the last few levels. Lungfish Opolis, with its unique kaiju theme, which added some fun variation to the feel of the game. Glorious Theater, which had a unique mechanic of putting together different stage shows, which gave off different settings and tones and created funny situations, and also opened the level up for exploration. Oh look! The mailboat sank and everybody died! The end! Waterloo, which depicted a massive board game. Black Velvetopia, which featured a stunning neon, blacklight-inspired visual style that was just a blast to play through. And of course, the Milkman Conspiracy, which was peak surreal wackiness. I am the Milkman. My milk is delicious. I am the milkman. My milk is delicious. Special delivery today. The humor and aesthetic complemented the game's tight platforming gameplay and unique psychokinetic focused story, which featured Rasputin Aquato, the main character, traveling in and out of different mentally disturbed people's brains. Top it all off with a lot of collectibles to find throughout these worlds, and you have yourself quite the worthwhile collectathon. If you haven't played it, please do, it's really good. The main story of the game follows Raz as he goes to Psychic Summer Camp to try and become a Psychonaut. Psychonauts are basically psychic secret agents who travel inside people's minds to solve crime and help heal traumas. While at camp, he realizes someone is stealing his fellow campers' brains, so he has to stop them. The game ends with Raz saving his classmates and becoming a junior Psychonaut, and leads to a cliffhanger where it is revealed that Truman Zanotto, the head of the Psychonauts and father of Lily, Raz's girlfriend, has been kidnapped and the Psychonauts set off to save him. This leads directly into a VR game called The Rhombus of Ruin, which was released in 2017. I didn't play it because I don't have a VR set. Psychonauts 2 does give a little recap video explaining the big events of Psychonauts 1 and the Rhombus of Ruin, but I was still a little confused at the start of Psychonauts 2, so I recommend watching a playthrough of the Rhombus of Ruin if you don't have a VR set. It's only like a two hour game. Shout out to Morpheus Games, I watched your playthrough of the Rhombus of Ruin, so thanks. Anyways, Rhombus of Ruin is essentially the mission of the Psychonauts saving Grand Head Zanato from an abandoned underwater Psychonauts lab. It ends with Raz and the other core Psychonauts rescuing Grand Head Zanato, capturing series villain Dr. Lobato, and realizing that there is a mole in the Psychonauts organization. This leads directly into Psychonauts 2. There is a lot more that goes into these games story and theming wise, but I could spend two entire videos talking about each, and this video really is about the new game, so I'm going to leave the synopsises of those two games here. Anyways, Psychonauts 2 is finally here. I was really looking forward to it. I played through the first game in anticipation. I thought the trailers were looking really good, and I am pleased to say that I liked this game a lot too. There are some things that I think the first game did a bit better, but Psychonauts 2 still provides a great 3D platforming collectathon experience. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Just due to the nature of the game, I'm going to be spoiling a bit. I'm going to try not to spoil anything major or go too far into depth with story analysis, but I am going to talk about a couple levels and the themes that go along with them. If you want to go into the game completely blind, I'm going to have this whole video time-coded, so just skip ahead from the story discussion when I get to it. 
So first off, let's address the now infamous difficulty modifiers that make it so that you can't take damage, or that remove combat encounters completely, and all that. On one hand, I think it's a little silly because I think removing all challenge and all combat removes part of the gameplay experience, so you're missing out to a degree in that sense. But on the other hand, it's not that big of a deal for this specific game. First off, Psychonauts 2 is not a hard game. I think I died maybe twice in my entire playthrough. It's not like a Souls game, where the difficulty is tied to the game experience. Falling off a cliff doesn't kill you in this game, it just takes away one little blip of health. And while I personally enjoyed the combat in this game, it's not a combat-focused game. It's not like Doom or Devil May Cry, where removing the combat from those games takes away the entire gameplay experience. The majority of the challenge, gameplay focus, and overall fun of Psychonauts 2 comes from the platforming and collectathon aspects of the game. These difficulty modifiers are not going to make the jumps for you. They aren't going to be collecting things for you. So what I would consider the most important element of the gameplay experience aren't affected much. So while I encourage you to play without the invincibility turned on and play with the combat turned on, don't let people tell you you're missing out on the core of the gameplay experience. You're still going to have to make those jumps, and you're still going to have to comb through the level to find figments and half a brains and psych cores and baggage and all that. Psychonauts 2 picks up right where the Rhombus of Ruin left off and throws you right into the first level, the brain of Dr. Lobato, as you begin the search for a mole in the Psychonauts agency. This level acts as a good tutorial, introducing you to different mechanical concepts like basic platforming, collectible hunting, enemy variety, combat, and psi abilities. Psi abilities are things like psi blast, psychokinesis, levitation, and clairvoyance. There are some new abilities in this game, some abilities from the first game come back and some don't return, but overall they're all useful, and the game encourages you to switch back and forth between these, which you can do at any time to experiment in combat and with platforming. Personally, I found the only ability I had equipped almost the entire game to be levitation, and that was mainly because I like getting around really quickly. That said, there are definitely moves that are better for platforming and level exploration, and moves that are better for combat. So I sort of established loadouts, for lack of a better word, that I would switch back and forth between depending on if I was in combat or if I was exploring for collectibles. The combat in Psychonauts 2 is improved over the first game. You still have a basic melee attack and the mentioned psi abilities just like in the first game. But Psychonauts 2 also adds an enhanced dodge mechanic, making it easier to avoid enemy attacks. Psy attacks are also a little more differentiated and have more specific and strategic purposes. Psychokinesis is now more of an AoE attack. There are also enemies weaker to fire than others. Psy blasts can be charged up. You have enemies that need to have clairvoyance performed on them to reveal weak points. You can use telekinesis to steal enemies' weapons and throw it back at them, pull them closer with mental connection, slow them down with time bubbles, and even summon an archetype to help you fight. All these psi abilities can be leveled up as well, giving not only things like extra damage, bigger area of effect, or longer combos, but also shorter cooldowns, and even functional changes, such as being able to charge up and jump higher with levitation, making them more effective not only in combat, but for exploration as well. Different enemies require different skills to kill, and being able to use all these skills in tandem with one another is really the key to the combat encounters in this game. And you could do some cool stuff. Still, if you just want to tank your way through most combat encounters, that's an option too. Really, only the final boss requires some more strategy and finesse, or at least a bunch of health revive items. I still wouldn't call Psychonauts an action game though. The combat is still pretty basic, but all of these improvements are much appreciated and contribute to a more robust combat experience. By the way, the archetype projection that you can summon is voiced by Ricky Simmons, who voices Gurr from Invader Zim. Raz is voiced by Richard Stephen Horvitz, who also voiced Zim from Invader Zim. So there's a cool little Zim reunion going on here. How's it going? Mm, feeling a bit flat. <laughs> Sup, clone? Aw, that's cute. My clone thinks he's real. The game also features voice acting from Jack Black. Dear universe, please shut up! And Elijah Wood. When I start talking, it's going to be amazing! Like in the first game, platforming is still super tight and there's a bunch of collectibles to find. Levels are creatively laid out to encourage exploration and platforming. 
For example, there are these campsites that you can burn which create updrafts that you can then use your levitation bubbles on to fly yourself upwards to reach hard to reach areas. Some of the collectibles from the first game return. These include figments of imagination. These are the hardest collectibles to find in my opinion because there are so many of them and they often blend in with the environment. Emotional baggage, you need to find both the bag and their corresponding tags to collect them. They're a little easier to find because, well, they're bigger and you can also hear them crying. There are some new collectibles like Nuggets of Wisdom and Half a Brains to find, which give Raz upgrades to health or psi abilities upon collecting. Mental cobwebs don't return from the first game, which I was a little disappointed about because I like the cobweb duster, but it's not really that big of a deal. There's a bunch of crap to find. There are still psi cards and challenge markers and titanium to collect, and this game has its own scavenger hunt too. Completing the scavenger hunt rewards you with Raz's clothes from the first game, which is cool, but you can't complete the scavenger hunt until after you beat the final boss, so you'll just be changing costumes for that last couple collectibles that you missed before finishing it. That said, some of these collectibles can be really hard to find, and the majority of your time playing this game will be spent hunting items in the huge open hub world levels or sprawling mind levels. There are four hub worlds to explore and nine different brains to explore with stuff in it. One huge improvement in this game over the first is that there is no point of no returns, preventing you from going back and getting collectibles. There are some point of no returns which push story progression, but after completing the story, you can go back and get whatever you missed. In the first game, you couldn't, so if you reached the point of no return, you were fucked. Titanium is this game's currency. Like in the first game, there is a shop that you can buy Psy Cores, Dream Fluffs, and Psy Pops. Dream Fluffs and Psy Pops are basically this series health and revive items. But you can also buy equipable upgrades as well. I'm a little mixed on these equipables. You can only equip three upgrades at a time. There are a bunch of different upgrades to buy. There are some that give different buffs or effects to each of your Psy abilities. There's one that lowers the price of shop items. And there's a bunch that just affect cosmetics too, like changing your levitation ball color or turning your astral projection 8-bit or turning your punches yellow. I found that limiting these equipables in this way really discouraged experimenting with them. Some are definitely better and more useful than others. It also discourages looking at all the different cosmetic changes. I almost feel like the cosmetic changes should have just been a free equip, so you could always have at least three slots open for Psy ability upgrades. I very quickly settled into just keeping three badges that I liked to equip and never really swapped them out. What made the first Psychonauts so great wasn't only the tight gameplay and fun collectibles though. It was genuinely funny and had a really unique tone and featured really creative and interesting visual styles and level design. These are areas I'm a little mixed about with Psychonauts 2. I'll start with what I didn't like as much. The first thing, and probably the thing I feel strongest about, is that the humor is not as good in this game as it was in the first game. Similar to how Ratchet and Clank has changed in recent years, the crude humor is nearly non-existent. Even some of the gameplay humor is missing, like being able to set animals on fire. Though there is a reference to the See You in Hell gag from the first game. Ow! Man! Watch it! See you in hell! Psychonauts 2 isn't completely humorless, just because I didn't find it as funny doesn't mean I didn't find it funny at all. It actually leans more into surreal humor, even gross out humor at times, more so than the crude humor that the first game was known for. There are a couple good dirty sexual innuendos throughout the game though. Hey, I remember this place. We used to sneak in here around on the beanbags, remember? In fact, if I didn't have the first game to compare it to, I wouldn't be complaining here. But I definitely miss the crude, mean-spirited humor of the first game. That said, this game is still really dark and depressing at times. It's not scrub squeaky clean, but the darkness is played completely serious instead of played for laughs. And I actually like how dark this game gets, and I'll go into that in a bit. But I still wish that the 2000s crudeness was present. And that carries into some other things that I didn't like as much. The new intern characters, I didn't like them. They are not nearly as interesting as the campers were in the first game. In the first Psychonauts, the campers were all deranged and weird and different. Hey, wanna help me save the world? 
Not now, Raz. I'm trying to finish writing my memoirs before we all die. Sure, you had the generic bully characters, but you also had Chloe Barge, who thought she was an alien and wore a space helmet everywhere. JT, who acts and speaks like a cowboy. Crystal and Clem, who are outwardly cheery but try to commit suicide twice in the game because they hate how mean everyone is at the camp. Mikhail, who comes from Russia, who obsessively seeks out a large hairless bear and becomes Maloof's bodyguard when he forms his little revenge organization. And of course, Dogen Bool, who often explodes animals. All of the campers are like this with unique personalities and interesting oddities. The interns in Psychonauts 2 in comparison are so boring and generic. I mean, you get the mean nerdy girl, the guy who likes music, the alt girl, the girl who skateboards, Dogen's sister, and the British guy? The most interesting of the bunch is Sam Boole, and that's mainly because of her relation to Dogen and the other newcomer, Compton Boole. They don't even look as interesting. They all have the same smooth, rounded features with muppetish eyes and nose, especially compared to the eclectic design of the campers from the first game with various neck lengths and ear sizes and head shapes. Luckily, every other aspect of this game's art and character design were great. The other set of new characters are the Psychic Six, now Psychic Seven, and I really liked every one of these characters, their personalities and their designs. And it's with these characters that Psychonauts 2's character design, story, and tone shine the most. The Psychic Seven consists of Ford Crawler, who was one of Raz's mentors and friends from the first game. He is the one who originally got the other Psychics together to form the Psychic Six. We've seen him before, his appearance and personality haven't changed, but we get a much deeper look into his backstory this time around. The other members include Otto Mentalis, Cassiopeia, Bob Zanotto, Compton Boole, Helmut Fulbear, and Lucretia Mux. Each of these Psychic Seven, except for Otto Mentalis, have their own levels, and all of them are super creative and fun. I really like Bob Zanotto's, which starts off in this open sea where you have to steer a floating door to different islands, and then the level gets divided into different segments with these bottles that are sticking out of the ground, seamlessly bringing you into different areas. It's really impressive to travel through these long stretches of level with different looks to them, divided up by these bottles. This level also has a unique platforming gimmick in which you need to use Bob's psi energy to displace water to continue traveling. Ford Crawler's mind was divided into different parts, each a reflection of his shattered psyche. One looks like hair, another was a mailroom with giant flying letters, and then my favorite was a bowling alley that fed into the city with germ people. Compton Bulls was a series of increasingly challenged cooking minigames in which you need to prepare giant sentient food in specific ways within a time limit. Cassiopeia's mind has a book motif. Everything is made out of book pages and is made to look like paper or ink in the case of the water. There are also these sections which turn 2D as you travel through books. Lucretia Mux's level looks like yarn, and I always like that aesthetic in games. And of course, Helmet Fullbear's world, which was shown most heavily in the trailers for the game. It looks like a 60s inspired psychedelic dreamscape, with bright distorted colors, 3D effects as you turn the camera, and surreal acid trip inspired visuals like giant noses and eyeballs, all coinciding with a rock concert. Every level has a uniquely enjoyable aesthetic and introduces a different gimmick needed to get around the world. Another level worth noting is Hollis Forsyth's. Hollis is second in command behind Grand Head Zanotto in the Psychonauts hierarchy. I found her unlikable at first because she's very rude and overly serious, but as the game went on, I began to sympathize with her more. She's supposed to come off as unlikable. She's stressed out and overworked and is basically overseeing all of the Psychonauts' operations. Anyways, her level is broken up into two different aesthetics, a classroom and a hospital-casino hybrid, and I really like this. I've mentioned in my ukulele review years ago that I really like how creative and unique casino levels can be, and mixing it with a hospital I just found really fun. It's really aesthetically interesting, and I liked platforming through the more abstract, neon-colored areas. This level introduces a new mechanic, the mental connection. I really like how it was implemented in Hollis's Hot Streak. You could connect various ideas together to open up new paths. You'd also get little dialogue accompanying each connected idea, stringing together how these connections could impact how somebody feels or thinks about a certain subject. Connecting certain things together could lead to funny results, and I liked the mechanic of utilizing these connections to reach new areas in the level. 
It was sort of like a word logic puzzle you had to figure out. Unfortunately, it really never goes beyond that, and it's not seen in any other level. This is one mechanic I really wish they fleshed out more. After this level, mental connections just appear as white little swirls that you can launch into. It doesn't require any thinking. There's no word puzzle element like I thought there would be. Just a little swirl. I wish all these other levels had actual word connection puzzles. I wish the puzzles got increasingly more complex, as we had to string together more and more complex ideas. This would have made world traversal a little more interesting, as well as added a little puzzle challenge to every level. Not only that, but I feel like it could have been implemented in a way that created hidden paths in every level. Imagine one string of connections opens up the path needed to continue the story, but other connections would open up secret areas, leading to more collectibles. It would encourage you to try all the different mental connections. Towards the later levels, they do add some more mechanics to this. For example, you have to slow down spinning fans in between these mental connections, so it's not all just click a button to jump, but I still would have liked to see a little bit more of that puzzle element come out in some of those levels. The last level I want to bring up is Fatherland Follies. This mine belongs to the actual main villain of the game and is presented as a It's a Small World style amusement park ride. Again, just a really creative level theme. It's something I don't think I've ever seen in a game before, and the song played throughout is wonderfully annoying. And here's where I'm going to dive into the story a bit. Psychonauts 2 story is deep, much deeper than I was expecting. It honestly gets a little much at times. The story begins with Raz and the Psychonauts trying to cure Grand Head Zanato of Silurium poisoning, as well as find a mole within the Psychonauts. It eventually leads to them discovering that Maligula, an evil psychic that the Psychic Six barely defeated in the past, is trying to return, which then leads to Raz reconnecting the Psychic Six in preparation to face off against Maligula. Mixed in there is Raz helping the Psychic Six with their traumas, the unraveling of the war and history of Grulovia, there's a part where Raz's circus family shows up, and Raz has to reconcile that he's a psychonaut now, not an acrobat. And then, of course, they actually find the mole. There's a lot that goes on in this game. This game tackles some real issues, too. Issues of loss, worthlessness, guilt, war, manipulation, mistaken identity, being true to oneself, overcoming past traumas, reluctance, family squabbles, overwhelming anxiety, love, alcoholism, and poverty and it tackles all of these issues in tactful, impactful, and meaningful ways, all with the lens of healing and understanding. This game can get really dark and depressing. Seeing characters react to seeing their loved ones seemingly killed or twisted or lost can be really heartbreaking, and exploring all of these characters' traumas feels really personal and intimate. This is a very empathetic game. The overall theme is, oversimplified, as your trauma is valid, but you can't hide from it if you are going to heal. You need to tackle your traumas head on or else risk losing yourself. I could honestly make a video for every character, going in detail about what their trauma means, but I think even simplified, it shows just how deep Psychonauts 2 gets. This forces me to ask the question, why aren't game journals hyping this game up more? It has everything that they love. Dark, deep, emotional story? Check. Themes of trauma and overcoming trauma? Check. It even has a gay couple and depicts a gay wedding. I don't think that the cartoony presentation holds any of it back. This game is thought-provoking and emotional as well as fun. It's a shame I don't see more articles about this game out there. I do actually have a couple complaints about the story. One is that the search for the mole begins to feel like a background objective once you start helping the Psychic Seven. Searching for the mole is set up as the main objective at the beginning of the game, but as the game goes on, it feels less and less important. I even forgot about it for a while I was playing through the Psychic Seven's levels, and I was more interested in their stories and their traumas and Maligula than I was about finding the mole or curing Truman. Also, I don't think the interns earned their involvement with the final boss. It should have been the Psychic Seven helping out there instead of the interns. It would have offered some closure and redemption for that set of characters and would have given us a good opportunity to really see the power of the Psychic Seven. And I also didn't like that at the very end, the other interns graduated out of the intern program with Raz despite not really doing anything other than some small assistant during the final boss. 
Lastly, this game gets really cutscene heavy, especially towards the beginning and end. Luckily, pretty much every cutscene is skippable, and there aren't really any walkie-talkie unskippable narrative sections except for the boat ride through Fatherland Follies. I wish that was skippable because repeat rides through that can get tedious when you're looking through collectibles. Luckily, the duty bugger teleporting guys are back, so you can just use them to jump between parts of the level, but it's still a minor annoyance. Also, one more minor complaint, some of the animations are just not quite as interesting as in the first game. For example, the little booger teleporter guys don't spit their bubbles out when they're idly standing, and also when you combine your Psy cards and Psy cores, you don't really get an animation from it, you just get this little picture that pops up. Unfortunately, there's a pretty big bug worth noting as well. In Compton Bull's level, after completing the last cooking challenge, it just throws you into the boss fight. You don't get a chance to pick up your last reward, which is a baggage tag. Upon coming back into the level, the box is locked and there's no way to open it, which means you're stuck without the last bag. Luckily, defeating the final boss and then returning opens it for you so you can get the last bag and get 100% completion, but it's still pretty annoying if you're trying to get everything up to the final boss. Well, I've been talking about this game enough. If you're a big fan of the first Psychonauts or even just 3D platformers and collectathons in general, Psychonauts 2 is definitely a game worth your time. The humor may not stand out as much as the first game, but it still features some great gameplay, wonderfully imaginative level design, and a surprisingly complex and emotional story. A deep game that doesn't sacrifice its aesthetic or fun factor to tell its emotional narrative. And I really appreciate that.